Sophia Rizzo, and this is My Only Friends. Today's guest is my friend, Krista Marie Yu. You know her from Dr. Ken, Last Man Standing, and she is currently playing Elaine Kim on Steve Levitan's new hit show, Reboot. After we had this conversation, I felt immense gratitude towards Krista for her openness, wisdom, and friendship. This episode reminds me of the Friends episode, the one with the girl who hits Joey solely because you should never underestimate Krista because of her size. She is tiny, but mighty. You can catch Krista on one of my new favorite shows, Reboot, now streaming on Hulu. Enjoy. Good. That artwork behind you is so beautiful. Thank you. I did it. You did that? (laughs) Yes, I did. Oh my God. That is stunning. Is that like something you do in your free time or you were just like experimenting? It was, um, I had a huge blank space. And then when my parents come, they sleep on this couch uh-huh. and I didn't thing with like glass or a mirror just in case. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I just went and bought a canvas and painted on it. Oh my gosh. Well, it looks amazing. And those colors are stunning. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's <laughs> does, usually doesn't get that reaction. So really? Like, <laughs> see, I, have, like I have one like that too. You can kind of see right there. Oh, pretty. Did you, and you painted that? No. Um, one of my really close friends, Alex, uh, did that for me. Cause she does like, that's her, you know, passion yeah. is, is art and like painting. And I was always bugging her for like, when are you going to do one for me? When do I get one? And you know, mm-hmm. she finally just like surprised me with one. She was like, I can't just like, it has to come to me and then I'll make it. And then it's yours. Like, it'll be yours when it's yours. Like, I can't just think I'm going to make something for Brittany. So, yeah. How are you? It's also so very like majestical, which like, yeah, makes me like very girly. (laughs) Yeah. And your dress is also very majestical. So beautiful. It's, um, so there's a store called Moonstar Collective in Topanga Mm -hmm. that um, a really good family friend of mine since like I was 16, like had this dream to open this store, um, and make her own clothes that, for you know like a while she would like go to south america and like provide jobs for like um battered women Mm. um and teach them how to sew so they could have like better lives um and now like her passion is in pasadena i mean topanga where she like has a curated space of all like local women's art um via like fashion that's so amazing yeah it's an amazing idea she's so cool she like like her little circle of people, like they all like, you know, like they die out of like avocados and are very uh, with the earth. That's so cool. (laughs) I feel like I'm not creative in that sense at all. Like sewing or like the other day I had to wrap presents and I am notoriously bad at like, like gift wrapping. It's impossible for me. Gift wrapping is so hard. It's so hard. And And small space too. It's just like, it's just not as easy. There's no table. Yeah. Like I, I've never been good at arts and crafts. I'm like stick figures, turkey hand drawing all the way. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's something in you that we just don't know. Okay. So I have to just say right off the bat that I'm obsessed with reboot. I'm obsessed oh with my- it. It's so Thank good, you. Krista. I literally <laughs> it's so was supportive. Like, Thank you. I mean, I always planned on watching it because you were in it, but then I was like hooked. Like it's one of the best shows streaming right now, hands down. Every aspect of comedy and the writing and the performances, it's so good. Are you like, how are you feeling now that it's out in the world? It's been a really great process in general and a great, I know like stepping stone for me to be a part of. Mm-hmm. So I'm on, honestly just like so grateful, but then like to hear the response from like the audience to like even people I know and like friends who've watched like you, it's just, um, it's really, really nice to like have all that support and like to know that the hard work, you know, is reaching people in the way that it has been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so good. The episode, I texted you this, but I have to say it again. The episode where you're having like a rom-com montage almost where you guys are like on the lot riding bikes, you're dressed as a fairy princess. I was like happy tears for you. I was like, this is what she <laughs> deserves more than anything is like this moment. Like you looked so beautiful. You looked so happy and you're like you can just tell that you're having like a really good time thank you yeah that episode i think was um 
I feel like it was like the first episode of the season for Elaine's character where she got a little bit like more. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was it was really cool to like just like kind of like open up in that way for her and like explore different things. And Caleb Worthy, who I think like is amazing. He just he just made everything so fun. And yeah, I don't know. Someone was like, oh, wow, like Krista, like you can tell like how your character like gets more confident on the bicycle over time. Like, like how, how did you like, you know, like put that into your character? I was like, no, no, no. Like that was not acting. Like that was the most terrifying. It was so hard, like biking in heels and wings and that dress. But I was so glad that it turned out the way it did. That's so funny. Yeah, I have to imagine like it's almost like when you get somebody else in your car for the first time and you're driving and you're like all of a sudden you forgot how to drive like because you don't. So it's like you're on the bike and you're like all these people are on set watching you and you're like, do I still know how to even ride a bike? (laughs) It was like that, which like I think I can ride a bike, but and I practiced all weekend on my bike with a dress and heels and all that shebang and a backpack. But um, this was one of those like cruiser bikes Mm. that's super heavy and super wobbly and a little bit too big for me. They actually had to switch out the bike because I'm short. And uh, yeah, I did not expect it to be so hard. I think the skirt caught on the spokes and I just like ate it. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I mean, like it's like, yeah, driving a car too. like it'd be like if you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can drive a car, but like also you need to um, like do it like blindfolded and like just like adding all these elements that you're just like not ready for. Like, yeah. It works yeah. Out. <laughs> I was going to ask you this and I don't know if this is a weird question, but do people underestimate you because of your size? Do you think? Oh, in life? In, I think yeah, so. I think so. Maybe I even underestimate myself, but I think microaggressions are, are real. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know you're petite too, but I, 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 st- I really remember this one time and it must to respond to your question. Like, I think this example must like be a reflection on the fact that I do keep a lot of that in because I was at Whole Foods ordering like like chicken or something. It, it really like isn't even like a big deal, but because they couldn't see me but on the other side, they kept like going to other people oh. and nobody else would be like, oh, she's next. And so I finally like got the courage to be like, oh, actually, I was next. And he was like, well, I didn't see you there. Like, oh. you know, he kind of like undermined the fact that I was like trying to like have a voice and stand up for myself. And I just like burst it into tears because <laughs> I got through like six or seven people of like nobody saying anything because they can see me. The other people who are waiting Oh my God. And so, yeah, I think um, sometimes people are like, oh, well, she's not going to say anything Mm. or, or it might just be my own internal like struggle with like finding voice and um, Mm -hmm. taking up. Yeah. yeah, Some people have no physical awareness or spatial awareness. But I was thinking about it like before our interview today, I was like, you know, I was thinking back when we were at Froyo and when we were talking, like, you are so comfortable in who you are, at least, you know, that's what you portray to me. And that's what I've gotten from you. And you are so confident in your own voice. And like, you're very good with like sticking up boundaries and speaking in a way that's like so present. And I get the idea that like, nobody can fuck with you. That's the, (laughs) that's the kind of vibe I get off, but you're also the most incredibly sweet person ever. And then I was like watching some of your stuff and I'm like, oh, she's little and like, you know, and I'm five one. So I think you're what, like five two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, I was just wondering like how, and, and as Elaine also in reboot, you are this tiny, cute girl, but you're powerful. And so that's what made me wonder, like, do people underestimate how powerful you are in the real world too? And like, because I feel like you're really good at holding your own and it would shock Thank some people. You. Thank you. Yeah. That might be like the Scorpio in me. I've got, and my mom yes. was like a lawyer. She's pretty aggressive. So that, that comes out like loyalty to me is really important. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes like the claws do come out. Um, but I do also think that it's funny. Like it depends with work. It depends like on Dr. Ken, we were all kind of the same height or not the same height, but like, I looked tall on that show. And then um, on Last Man Standing, I looked very, very, very short because I think like 
everyone is tall. Like Molly's tall, Nancy's tall, Tim's tall, Kristoff's tall, Jordan's tall. They're all very tall. I think Amanda is less tall, but still taller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like when Caitlin would be there, I'd be like, yay, now there's another, right. another petite person. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'd watch that show and I'd look like I was three feet tall. So it's funny how like TV has like weird perspective, but on, um, on a reboot, they actually give me like, I I feel like my heels are like, they're here. I'll show you. I think they're like six, five inches. Oh God. Oh God. No. I don't know. Cause they're actually like, uh, my character is a tribute to this, um, amazing showrunner and writer from Modern Family named, um, Elaine Co. And I guess she would always wear Elaine Co. So she'd always wear um, crazy heels. So that was kind of like a, a shout out to her. Be, and they put me in heels. And at first I was like pretty good because those are mine. Those are from when I was hostessing in Austria Mama back in the day. Mm-hmm. But like, and they're platformed. But like, man, I don't know. I can't do it anymore. Even today, I was like going up the stairs because um, my bedroom is the attic because I wore heels last night I was like oh man like my my feet cannot handle this anymore Mm -hmm. I was up and down the stairs no oh my gosh (laughs) I didn't realize that um your character was based on a real person yeah like it's not like technically based on her like personality or anything but it's like inspired by yes like a, um, a commemoration of her in some kind of way that's so sweet I love that I love that she was so special to somebody that they were like let's make her into a character exactly that even the bike scene i think was a tribute to her too because she learned how to ride a bike on the fox lot oh my god that's so sweet i love that i really actually lived that that journey which was it was really special um i definitely won't forget that one (laughs) and then you had said i mean we'll get more into the show's that you love later, but you said one of your like go-to comfort movies was 13 going on 30. So how is it working with (laughs) Judy Greer? It's been very, very cool to work with Tom Tom. I mean, she's in everything Mm -hmm. Judy Greer. Like, so I had never met her. Okay. I'd met her once before when, again, when I was working at Austria Mama and my boss, like wouldn't let me give away a table that had a reservation. And then she walked in and won that table and I wasn't able to give it to her. And I was like devastated because I'm a huge Judy Greer fan. And I was like, oh my God, I was going to last time. I, I just was like, no, like it was, you know, like she isn't even like, sometimes like there are actors out there who like are considered divas or whatever, but mm-hmm. she is not that. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh, and she's so nice. And I have to tell her like, I can't put her at the table. And so to like reconvene in a way that I'm actually working with her and like, I don't even know what I'm saying, but I just think she's super cool, super talented, super smart. And I love 13 going on 30. I think I've seen it maybe like 15 times and she plays Tom Tom so well and she looks exactly the same. I don't know how she does it. Literally looks exactly (laughs) the same. It was so funny because 13 going on 30 was on E the other day. And I'm just still (laughs) one of those people who I will not get rid of cable for this reason, because I love that. Like, I just, you know, got home and turned the TV on and E happened to be on and like all of a sudden I'm watching 13 going on 30 and crying my eyes out and it's like it's so good and Jennifer Gardner yeah. is like the scene where she's like I just want you to be happy Maddie and she's like crying and like wishing over the dollhouse again I was a wreck oh, I and I, I was know. just like she's so good like she is so unbelievably good and at that she's so good. she really like touches so many like relatable places like when she's in the in the closet and you know hasn't really necessarily had to take like some space from her parents and realize like, like she just really actually needed her mom and dad like mm. oh, that always makes me cry like with the happy pancakes the next morning <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah that scene with with um mark i always say his last name wrong ruffalo ruffalo ruffalo, ruffalo yeah ruffalo i don't know do you have like a, a love who like I feel like I definitely I wouldn't I wouldn't break up the wedding I wouldn't go and be like you need to marry me but there are people who I've been like uh I should have like went for that (laughs) oh for sure there's there's definitely one person that comes to mind where I'm just like we always had that friendship when we were from like literally 13 up until mid-20s and then it just kind of fell apart and it was never more we were just like very very close friends we were we were boyfriend and girlfriend for like a hot second when we were 13 but then it was like we were just the best of friends for so long and Mm. now we don't speak 
and it it is one of those things where you're just like oh i miss that like that 13 year old friendship that where everything Mm -hmm. felt so special you know yeah life was just um i don't know younger (laughs) it it just comes from like a different like approach um Mm -hmm. i think when we're like when we're kids and like in love it's so crazy though like you couldn't pay me to be 13 years old again i mean if i could know everything i know now and go back maybe but like i think middle school was like the worst time for me probably middle school was really rough for me too i uh switched schools in seventh grade Mm -hmm. actually was a very like um it was a what is what's the term when it's like life-changing moment it was a turning point for me i think because Mm -hmm. um was always part of like this one little group like in kindergarten through sixth grade like I don't you know we just like did our thing and then I moved to a different school in seventh grade and like most people start in sixth grade so I was new and coming in at a weird time Mm -hmm. um, with hormones raging and all of that and um I had the hardest time I think I cried like the first like three months straight Mm. every day all the clicks like were already established I felt like no one talked to me and from then on, I remember I told myself, I was like, wow, like this feels awful. Mm-hmm. And I hope that if it's in my control, nobody will ever feel this awful. Right. <laughs> and so that is one lesson I learned that like, I really am not a fan of like exclus- exclusiveness and exclusivity and, um, or thinking like someone's like better than another person or like, you can't sit here, like that culture or like the popular girl culture, it really I don't, I don't necessarily like support, support the, the click yeah. situation. Yeah. And it's hard. It is really hard, especially when you're like, I was new in a high school situation. So I went to a brand new high school and the only person I knew going there was like one other girl from middle school and my sister. And it was so hard. My first couple of years there, like getting, I was still going and traveling back, you know, 25, 30 minutes away to go hang out with friends from mm-hmm. other schools. And I never really gave my new school a chance because I felt so lonely that I was like, I just don't want to do this. And we moved to a new house and like, and we specifically mm-hmm. moved because I was getting bullied. So it was like already one of those things where I was like, just a timid person going into it. And I don't think it was until I got on like dance team that I started like making friends and then be like coming into my own. But it is, it's so weird to think back about those times. (laughs) Like, no, it's 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 painful. And like, Mm -hmm. try to like hold, you know, like a happy face because you can't let anybody else like know that you're hurting. Like, Mm -hmm. I just remember like, there's this, I don't know if you guys have homeroom, but it's like you check Mm in Mm -hmm. Monday and tell everyone you did over the weekend. And we went in a circle and every single person said, I went to someone's bar mitzvah and I wasn't invited to this bar mitzvah. <laughs> and so every, and then I finally got to me and I pretended like I was like way too busy for a bar mitzvah because I was, I was busy ice skating, which I wasn't an ice skater growing up, but it's always hard to feel like you are like not included or you're the out. And like, you think that it's because there's something wrong with you. Um, Mm -hmm. and I did, I was like, well, what, what am I doing wrong? Am I not this? Am I not that? Or like, am I not likable? All these things. And, um, over time. And like you say, like, if you could go back with the knowledge, like I would probably tell myself, you know, like it is much more a reflection on other people and absolutely not really anything to do with, with oneself now. And like, I have lifelong friends from school right now. It was just a rough start. Do you find that you carried some of those feelings in with you when you started like auditioning and acting? Like this is like another, like sometimes I, I feel like there's, this is another party I'm not getting invited to and I'm trying everything. Yes. I mean, you mean with auditions? Like, yeah, just like auditions. You're like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why are, why is, and like, you're happy for your friends around you, but you're like, why is everybody else getting something but me right now? And like, why do I feel so excluded from this party that everybody's getting invited to? Like, I just Mm -hmm. want that one chance. Yeah. So for me, when it comes to like auditioning, I do recognize how much is out of my control Mm. there's so 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 much rejection and it's it's not personal and I think my tv mom from Dr. Ken Susie Nakamura gave me some like a great metaphor one time she was telling me about this like snake she was working and um I forget what show it was on but they had to bring in a snake 
And so they had three options for this snake. There was a white snake, gorgeous, stunning, uh, a snake that like no one has ever seen, like just like what you wouldn't ex- like picture if you thought of this, this, a snake, mm-hmm. but and it could do everything. You told it to do this. It would do that. It told it to do that. It would do this. We could do anything you wanted it to. And then there was like a diamond back snake, like the normal snake that it's like, okay, like when I picture snake, that is the snake that I see. Mm-hmm. And it just sat there. It did nothing, nothing at all. And then there was another option, but I don't remember the story about that one, but they went with the one that looks like a snake and did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And um, that story really helped me because I was like, she was like, you know, it doesn't matter if you are capable of standing on your head, going upside down and whatever. Like, it's not personal. It's just like right. whatever they feel like in their head is right for that moment. And um, another thing that I think helped me a lot with that, there have been some that I've like sobbed over because, you know, like you pour so much into it and you're just tired and like yeah, exhausted. But um I know, you know, like we're both part of like the acting world. So we have a lot of like acting friends and we know like what rejection feels like. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels shitty after you work so hard and you don't get it or you actually just don't hear. Yeah, <laughs> nothing into the um, void. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> this one away. Throw it out. But, uh, you know, you also know how great it feels when you do get something. Right. And so like, I always try to like remind myself, like even if they're a friend or not, or I know them or don't, that feeling of like getting something, somebody else gets to feel that. And um, it, it really is hard to not be happy for that person. Right. Like, wow. Like, I know how they're feeling right now. They must feel so, so happy. Right. Um, and it's even better when you do know the person and they're like amazing. It's um, it's a nonlinear path. So I know I just like try to like feel, feel grateful. And I think also like, I, like I said, I grew up ice skating and it's um, very like merit based. Mm. And I think like that really like toughened me up in terms of like, competition like I don't really see I don't see people other people as competition my biggest struggle is my like myself like yeah feeling like enough like I could have done better I could have done this more why did I do that I I, like should have done this or like um, I always like have some like deep-seated fear I'm gonna get fired because I didn't do that enough or I said something weird because I'm kind of a like a quirky weird person and you know like I, I go through my head in those kind of ways and I second guess myself and those sense of so if I, and the competitiveness comes out of um, competitive with myself yeah I totally understand that and I always have that fear too of I'm gonna get fired every single time yeah it's um it's definitely a lesson like I do feel like the first show I was on that affected my work in a negative way and so I promised myself after that if I was lucky enough to get another job that I would um, remind myself to enjoy it and have fun. Like, why else am I doing this? Exactly. Um, And then the more I did that, the more my work opened up and like Tim Allen was like, you have to be okay making mistakes. Mm. And over time, I think I have like grown, especially like this year, not only like because I'm playing like someone actually my age, but like I tend to be like a little bit of a people pleaser. And Mm -hmm. if that bleeds into my acting, then I'm not being like necessarily as authentic to the work and myself. And that also uh, affects my work too. That's yeah. No, that totally makes so much sense. And it's also good for anybody who's an actor to hear that, you know, that's really great advice to like take in. Thanks. Yeah. I think it's like really easy to be like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Right. Cause it's true. Like we're all like actors, we're all flexible. We can give you whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've learned over time that just like making a choice and trusting, like trusting oneself is um, always has always been very hard for me. Like I can't decide what to eat for dinner, like every single day. Oh Actually God. speaking of beauty, it's, why is it so hard? I think like Judy, I followed you on Instagram and she posted something that made me laugh so hard. It was like a story that said like, no one told me that like adulthood was um, having to like choose your dinner every single day for the rest of your life. <laughs> you literally, it's so hard. It's so hard. I mean, it's really hard. And I mean, sometimes like getting the motivation to cook too and then clean. Mm-hmm. Um, and I live by myself. So it's like, um, you know, it's, it's not always that easy to feel motivated mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, although you inspired me the other day with your, your salad making. And you're oh like, you have the Rachel wait what is it the Rachel oh, the salad? Jennifer Aniston salad which I then found out well it wasn't even her salad she like did an interview she's like no this isn't it but I would eat it and then she like went on to say what her actual salad was and I was like oh I would never eat that 
because I had, oh, like, sal- had like salami and stuff and I was like oh, I don't I don't fuck with salami that much it's interesting because the only time I ever wish that I have a boyfriend is when it's like a long day and I get home and I'm like I wish somebody would just cook me dinner and I wish that my <laughs> apartment was clean but then I'm like well then I just need an assistant I don't need a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I had a boyfriend who did tell me he felt like he was my assistant. I was like, but what, but what, what, what else is a boyfriend for? Exactly. <laughs> You're like, cook my food get, like, and give me your sweatshirt. Vouchers. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. So you went from ice skating. What made you want to be an actor? What was like the moment where you were like, was it a certain show that you watched? Was it a certain character where you saw yourself in them? It's it's interesting you asked me what character I saw myself in because I didn't. Mm. I didn't. I saw myself in Trini um, from Power Rangers. I wanted to be the Yellow Ranger because she's Asian and she was amazing yeah. and badass. You know, like uh, defeated bad guys. But I it didn't. I mean, a little bit in London, tipped in. That's her name, right? From um, Brenda Song. Yeah. Sweet Life. Yeah. Cause she was beautiful and I wanted to like be like her. Um, mm-hmm. but and no, funny. Like, I, so funny. Hilarious. And yes. Oh my God. Did you get to watch Dollface yet? I started the first episode. I have like, I think 15 minutes left and she's in that. And that's amazing. Oh. I really yeah, love the concept of it. Oh my God. I love that show. I'm so sad it got canceled. I wanted to be in it, but that's, you know, probably definitely a show I saw myself in because, um, now like a, at the age of 34 you know like shay mitchell is asian brenda song's asian also like the girls themselves are going through a time in their lives that i also am like i think they're all like you know single trying to figure themselves out late 20s early 30s and just like you know understanding themselves in relation to their independence but also like the male culture and dating mm-hmm. culture and it's a really really fun and i think empowering show um, and the outfits, of course, are like stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's clever. And there are also like stories in there that I think have happened to all of us in terms of ways that they've been hurt by like other men or just like by each other and like friendships and work stress and um, mm-hmm. social dynamics. But no, like when I look back on my life, like I realized like I was obsessed with all like the blonde women. Like I wanted to be uh, Avril. I loved pink. Brittany, obviously, and um, oh, like Cher Horowitz from Clueless. Yes. And so, yeah, I don't think I was ever saw myself represented, but I wanted to be like, like these women who all these people thought were so beautiful and so cool. And they are. But I am really excited now to see a lot more of the representation in terms of like the diversity of beauty. Like Mm -hmm. beauty isn't just one standard. And I think that is like becoming more reflected in in our media absolutely and so who was the first character where you were like oh i see myself finally like what was the most like that representation that you were wanting so badly what character was that honestly it's probably like a cartoon like i loved um spirited away okay um it's uh, about this it's on yeah i highly recommend it's a hero miyazaki movie but it's like this young little girl who just like learns to depend on herself Mm. And so, like, there were a lot of movies like that. Oh, like, duh, Mulan. What am I talking about? Mulan. Obsessed with Mulan. Of course. Um, but yeah, like, Juno is like that, too. You know, they're all young girls who learn how much strength they have within themselves based mm-hmm. on situations that they are put in. Mm. And um, I, I heavily relate to those things. Like, oh, like, you know, you might not know. You might not understand, like what you are capable of until you are faced with adversity. Absolutely. And, you know, like Juno got pregnant, Mulan went to war, like, you know, like, <laughs> these are, like you're very accepting. Same thing. Things. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every day. <laughs> um, they're, they're all, they're, they're inspiring stories. And um, I love the girl power behind it. I love how the message I received was like, You know, you don't necessarily have to do what the world tells you to do. Mm -hmm. There's no should. Should is a tough, a tough thing. Um, You know, like social construct makes us think so many things. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think actually like depression and anxiety comes from that because like, it's like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be doing this or like, oh, I'm not this. And um, of course there are many other factors as to why, like, you know, like chemical factor. But um, I do think that if I were to, you know, 
I don't know, like push, if I were like push a restart button on society, I would be like, you know, don't please, like, please stop telling us all that we have to be this one thing right. in order to feel good about ourselves or in order to like feel beautiful in order to like feel successful. Like mm-hmm. what is the definition of success? Everybody can have their own, I think. Right. Right. And I do. it's interesting because I was just talking to my therapist yesterday about the whole should thing. And I'm like, I have this and this and this, and I should be happy. And I feel like I'm being an ungrateful brat that I'm not. And she was like, you need to get to a place of neutrality where you don't have to inundate yourself with positive thinking, but just neutral where you wake up because the more you try to say, I should feel this way, I should feel this way. And you bury your depression down or you bury those feelings down that are actually happening, the bigger that monster is going to get. And it's literally like what you resist persists. And it's totally that. And the more you deny the present moment, the more anxiety and depression you're going to have. So instead Mm. of like telling myself, I should be happy and not depressed, is such a horrible way to go about it that I'm learning Mm -hmm. because I'm invalidating my own feelings. And it's like, the world already does that enough. I don't need to do that to myself. Like, that's so stupid. But but there I go again, being like, I'm beating myself up, calling myself stupid. Like, it's this whole thing. (laughs) You're like, you should do this and you should do this. And it's like, no, I just need to, like, I'm really trying to get to that point in my life where I'm just present. Where like hard it's a hard thing oh it's it's definitely a practice mindfulness is a practice that's for sure for but sure it, yeah the whole, whole like we need to kind to each other thing mm-hmm. or to ourselves yeah and like you don't have to tell yourself well i should be this and i should be that because it's that's only going to create bigger problems for yourself absolutely i completely agree it's um it's tricky like with comparison culture with everything you see in the media, with everything you see on social media. And we all have like our own like personal goals and stuff. So it's like, it's, it's very, very hard. And I mm-hmm. think like each step of the way, it's like, it's always nice to be able to, or have someone else give you permission or to tell yourself like that, like wherever you are in this moment, like that is fine. Like the journey is the journey and you, you don't have to, I, I don't have to ever be at goalpost Mm -hmm. like it will always be continuously like moving so it's like a a flow I don't know when you were saying like if you deny your feelings it makes everything worse and it's so true like it's kind of like when you're like doing yoga or meditating which I've only done a couple times but it's like (laughs) you know like they're like there's like an itch on your leg like if you're like don't itch don't itch all you're thinking about is like that itch itch on your leg Mm -hmm. but you got to just like itch itch it and then continue on it's like I accept that they're there and move through it, like let everything flow through your body. And I, yeah. I, I love that video because like, I try to like apply that to like everything, like when it comes to especially like negative or toxic thoughts. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Cause I think with depression, it's like, you know, I was telling her logically, I know all these things, but emotionally mm-hmm. and like mentally in my own body and feelings, I can't change it. And so that's where that mm-hmm. whole conversation came about of like, well, don't try to change it. Just like feel it. You got to feel it to heal it. That's the biggest thing. When you are having those hard moments in your life, is there a certain character you channel? When I'm like, okay, I got to find, like, I'm always, whenever I'm at work in any form, I'm like, I have to channel my inner Rachel Green because she served coffee <laughs> for years and she didn't love her job. And it was so interesting because there's a, there's an episode of friends where she's like, she quits Central Perk and she's like, I never have to serve another cup of coffee again. And then it cuts to her at her brand new job, learning how to make a cup of coffee. And she's like, oh my God. And I literally just had this moment. I told my mom, like, I'm never going to have to wake up at 9 a.m. on a Saturday again. And then my new job was like, "Um, so we need you here by 8.30. And I was like, oh my God. Um, uh... (laughs) Like, I'm just not a morning person, but it's fine. But it was, it just, of course, reminded me of a friend's episode. I'm like, you know what? Rachel Green went through it. So could I, I'll be fine. (laughs) You can do it. I believe in you. But yeah, yeah, Saturday, not a morning person either. I, Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying so hard to get myself like on this, this morning routine track, but waking up, if I don't have something planned, has never been like easy for me. I love to sleep. Yeah. Love to sleep. I love rest. But yeah, like who do I channel? I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Chihiro from Spirited Away, Juno, Mulan. 
all the, all those it's it's funny like you when i watch tv it's like an escape for me right in a way that like my mind almost turns off right so like preparing for this podcast i was like wow i don't invest as much i don't think as as i think like some people i just sneeze again oh my gosh um <laughs> <laughs> sorry as some Blessings. people do i, I it, it for me it's like my brain just kind of like goes blank and i just like stare at the screen mm-hmm. um so i don't know if i like really remember or like channel like i channel like people in my life and i lean like heavily on my friends mm-hmm. when i'm when i'm struggling like i'll be like i just need to talk things out same i literally had a weekend this past weekend where i just was like i think it was like you know, my biggest downfall is I go, 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 go. And then the second I stop, I realize, oh, I'm not really doing okay. And then I break. And like, it was literally like, I talked to every single one of my friends. I'm the voice memo queen. So we're like voice memoing back and forth. I had one girlfriend come over one night, the next night, another one. And we watched the Selena Gomez documentary each night. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if you've watched it yet. Incredible. It is so good. And I think, you know, she's also somebody I probably channel because it's one of those things when you see somebody of her magnitude be like what she's actually gone through and how she feels. You're like, if she can get through it, I can get through it. And Mm -hmm. love. And, and, you know, I've looked at you that way, too. And I've like, you know, you work so hard. You've had a lot of things happen in your life that you've had to overcome. And I'm like, she can do it. I can do it. And I think there's there there are there's a lot of people in my day to day life where I definitely feel that way about them. And without my friends, I would be nothing because like they they truly are the one they it's nice when somebody can be the outside voice right for sure just even to listen like i think Mm -hmm. it's it's hard to to know that it's okay to to be not okay Mm -hmm. Um, and then once you start like talking to your friends about it you realize like we're all like kind of in this boat together Mm -hmm. and it honestly like makes the more vulnerable we are with each other i think like the stronger we become as a community absolutely Um, it's like whole like perfectionism pressure that i don't know if you feel i always feel it so it's nice to have the permission via friends or outside sources that it's like no 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 like you already are exactly what you need to be there's there's nothing nothing more right right and like you said it's that goalpost that's constantly moving but sometimes we always feel like we're just falling short of it no matter how amazing we're doing at something it's like but we're just short of it. Well, at least that's how I feel where I'm like, I know I'm doing something amazing, but I still feel like it's not enough. And then you have your friends be like, no, literally, like I see this. I know you can't see this because you have this filter over your brain, but like, I'm telling you what the actuality is and just friends who can be honest with you. And like you said, give you the permission. Like when we all give each other the permission to be a hundred percent ourselves and vulnerable and no judgment, when we are having these conversations like that is so beautiful and it's so lucky to have Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you are watching so okay so when you and i first met yeah we instantly started talking about sitcoms and i don't know if it's because i was probably wearing a friend shirt (laughs) (laughs) but i mean i grew up on friends too yeah so i don't know if you like clocked my shirt and we started talking I, what I thought was so not funny, but just like, so I would have never guessed when we were talking about like what sitcoms we love. And you were like, I really love King of Queens. And I'm like, I have <laughs> never heard anybody say that. Not that it's not a good show, but I've never heard anybody like my age range be like, I love King of Queens. Like, <laughs> I do. And I was thinking about it when you were talking about just turning on the TV and watching E because like that is a big actually reason why I also kept cable. Um, cause King Queens was always on TV land at like two in the morning. And, mm-hmm. uh, I think like the first like 10 years out here, I was, I was very, I worked in a restaurant or sorry, the first three years out here, I worked in a restaurant. And so I, um, was an insomniac. I still am kind of, but you know, you get off at like 10 PM and you're buzzing and you end up detoxing, eating dinner late. And then you don't go to sleep till three, but like 2 AM, mm-hmm. 1 AM King Queens always came on. 
and I had never seen it before. Um, so I watched like all these reruns with King of Queens and um, it is the timing between um, Leah and Kevin. It's incredible. I learned mm-hmm. a lot. I learned a lot. I also watched a lot of sitcoms um, because I was in multi-camera sitcoms and to prepare I wanted to like understand timing. So I watched a lot of Boy Meets World. I watched a lot of Fresh Prince. But yeah, King of Queens, I think, is done so, so, so well. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think a lot about that show actually. Yeah, it's so what's interesting, I couldn't find it anywhere to stream. It's there's ton no. of reruns on, but I couldn't find it to stream, so I was watching it on YouTube. And I was just watching the episode this morning of um his name Jerry Stiller. That's uh-huh. Yeah, Mm -hmm. where they're like trying to get him out of the house for the weekend. (laughs) And it's like they just like want some alone time between the two of them and they're trying to pawn him off on everybody. And it was just (laughs) so funny. And I was just talking to my girlfriend about this last night. I'm like, I miss TV shows like episodes of sitcoms where it was just one small thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think now with TV, you know, there's only eight to 10 episodes and everything is a big moment in every episode where like mm-hmm. I saw this meme where it was like, I miss the episodes where it was just like moving a couch, like talking about friends, because it's like mm-hmm. pivot is one of like that scene on papers, three sentences, three lines, pivot, pivot, pivot. (laughs) And it ended up being one of like the most iconic scenes ever. And it's like, yeah, I miss, I miss shows like that where it's like, this is an episode that's literally about moving a couch and it is so unbelievably funny. And every single time I've ever moved a couch in my apartment or anybody, I guarantee you three out of four people are like pivot, pivot. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's, you can always go back to it. And I'm like, I miss shows like that. We can just turn it on and there's something happening that's incredibly funny and you don't have to necessarily be paying attention. Your brain can be completely shut off when you're watching these things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you're not going to miss anything, but then all of a sudden I'm like my dad where I'm like standing by the couch, arms crossed, like watching the show. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's true. Um, I think like, physical comedy too and all those mm-hmm. shows were something that I would love to see to see sitcoms get back toward. Absolutely. Just like so much silliness in the simple things. Yep. Like even I was watching last night uh Friends of course as I was falling asleep and it was the one with Rebecca Romaine Stamos where she's like the one with the dirty girl and Ross goes over and her apartment's just like a mess and he thinks something is crawling on him and he does this like weird thing and I'm like it's so good I feel like the the, one of the sitcoms after friends like present day would be new girl of like Schmidt doing stuff like that like more physical comedy I love that show so much (laughs) it's so good it's it's so good I that is when I was watching over the pandemic as well I watched that I watched like eight seasons of Boy Meets World oh my gosh <laughs> Boy Meets World I rewatched because um you know it was the pandemic was really heavy for so, like everyone um mm-hmm. it definitely hit me and we had to go back to work and we we're supposed to be funny on Last Man Standing yeah and I needed some inspiration and so I chose Boy Meets World um because I think they kind of live in a similar world as Last Man Standing does like Tim Nancy Amanda, the way they all like approach Hector, Elizondo, the way they all like approach the sitcom is so grounded. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. we use that similarly in Boy Meets World. Um, it's not necessarily like big, big, bold moves, um, right. which is also hilarious. But the tone, the tone is a little different um, on, on Boy Meets World and Lesbian Standing. And so, yeah, I watched, I think I remember crying in, in those two because there was this one episode where oh my gosh, you know, this is right when all like the, the hate crimes against like age, old Asian people were really getting a lot of um, traction. And so I was already like very like drained and heated by um, watching these videos of mm-hmm. people getting beat up who are so vulnerable and helpless because they were Asian because of all the coronavirus misinformation and um, language being used around it. And so this episode of season one, I think it was like episode like I don't know, seven. Lindsay Price is this Asian American actress 
And the episode was about she like went to a mall and some guys like said something racist to her. And I don't I don't even remember like how it was handled in the episode. They were all very supportive of her. She was like crying on the couch. But like I sobbed, Mm -hmm. I think only just like because I think all it did was like bring bring voice and highlight the fact that this is happening. And I felt seen and I felt heard because a lot of times like things get so like brushed under the rug or like when we're talking about mental health, like it's like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep going. Or, Or don't talk about it. And so just to have the acknowledgement around it and why, like we were saying earlier, it is so important to talk about like feelings. Right. Um, and I do notice like with a lot of like people, we haven't been given necessarily like, the resources or the permission to like, to have feelings or to yep. like, and it, yeah, it only, it only helps us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely, I mean, I had goosebumps the whole time you were explaining that episode. Cause I remember it. Like, I mean, boy meets world was friends before friends for me. Mm-hmm. Like they were the only DVDs I had like the box set when I I moved. Yeah. When I moved to California and like got my own room in a place and a TV, it was like every night boy meets world. And I probably watched that show a million times, but it is one of those shows where I probably cry every single episode, almost like every moment with the dad, like Alan Matthews is one of my, like, he's probably my top TV dad of all time, just because he was so good like such an incredible actor but also like he just i I don't even know how to explain it his relationship with his kids was so amazing and like all the scenes with him and eric just like the scene where um every father's day i post this it's when eric is like moving on and he's like yeah but dad i'm always gonna bring you with me because you've taught me everything i know so you're always gonna be with me and i'm like oh But going back and then to he that, the squirrels. right, <laughs> <laughs> right. But going back to that episode, you said about how, you know, they made a racist comment about her. I think it's just so it's amazing that they were touching on that topic in the early 90s like that. But it also mm. makes me so sad that it's still timely, like mm-hmm. that not mm-hmm. much has changed. And mm-hmm. I think Boy Meets World in that sense was ahead of its time like it's like was it ahead of its time or have we just not changed that much but they talked about so much on that show like you know teen drinking and interracial couple with sean and angela and Mm -hmm. you know sean you know going through his drinking phase and everything so they talked about just like or when they had that one episode where the girl was getting beat by her dad and Sean was like trying to hide her out. Like there were Mm -hmm. so many as serious as the show could be. It was also incredibly funny, but you were, it was like, you know, kind of like spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. They're always teaching you something without shoving it in your face, which I think they just did like an incredible job of that. I think they did too. And yeah, I think it was a very impactful show to many of us. I know, um, I know Kayla really looks up to like Eric Friedel too. That's not his name. Will Friedel. Will Friedel. <laughs> uh, um, I know he like based a lot of his like character, I think, on, on from reboot via like, the interviews that we've had. That is so incredible. I love that. You know, there's definitely like I, I did a play once where I couldn't figure out how to kind of like when my character was doing nothing, how to make her more interesting because she was the more most grounded person in the play where Mm -hmm. everybody else was like crazy. And I'm like, oh, just be Chandler Bing. Like Chandler (laughs) Bing's reactions to everything are just so like, I I mean, he he can say absolutely nothing and you're still watching him the whole time. I definitely can now, and now that you say he channeled Will Friedel, I'm like, oh, I can totally see that. Like totally see see that. They're both like just so free and silly. And yeah, Mm -hmm. actually now that I think about it, like, we're not now that I think about it, but it just came to me that like, you know, I do when I do act like a lot of my lessons have come from like people that I've like worked with, like on Dr. Ken, like making a bold choice was something that that cast was so, so good at. Mm-hmm. And so oftentimes, like I do like say like, oh, well, what would, what would Jonathan Slavin do? Like, how, how do I think that like Dave Foley would do this or Tisha Campbell Martin? And so Um, It is, it is really cool how um, we learn so much just from like watching. Absolutely. You have worked with like icons, like you have worked with a lot of iconic people. It's, it's really 
unbelievable when I like sit back and think about it because they're also across the board, very kind and hardworking people. Mm. And um, that inspires me. It just reminds me like to not ever one, take it for granted, but two, like, why am I here? Like, why am I doing this? It's not necessarily for, you know, the the glory of it. And I see that in Nancy Travis. Like I see that in Susie Nakamura. I see that in Tisha Campbell Martin. All these people who just like genuinely love what they do and work their asses off to do it. And like, when they're not working, they are working even harder, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to get a job. And it's like, okay, if they're still hustling in the way that they're hustling, like, and like, you know, booked a pilot every single year for the last 25 years of their lives. Like that, that is what like an actor is. It's not, it's not, it's never going to get easier. And um, they love the work around it. And that's really inspiring. Right. And I I mean, it definitely goes to show, too, because, you know, you, Molly, Nancy, all people who work together, all people who have been so incredibly kind to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember after I met you, like I found you on Instagram and I was like, I've never I I can't remember the last time I met somebody and I felt better. Like Mm -hmm. I instantly was like, you are so incredibly nice. Your energy is so welcoming. You listen to people, which, you know, some people are just waiting to talk. You know what I mean? Or you are like very engaged with people and we related to each other and a lot of different things with our health. And it was like getting sitcoms to help us escape. And it was just like, oh, wow. Like I like this girl, I want her to be my friend. And it was so Mm -hmm. funny because I was just telling my other friend, I think all my friendships have just been me like, no, this person is going to be my friend, whether they like it or not. (laughs) That's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for choosing me. Of course. And it makes sense that you're a Scorpio too, because my closest girlfriends and my mom are all Scorpio women. And I just like gravitate towards Scorpio women, I think. What are you? I'm Aries. That makes sense too. I love Aries. Are you in therapy? I am in therapy. You are in therapy. therapy. What was the deciding Um, factor for you to start therapy? So I was um like I got very sick when I was like 16 and um, I had a really hard time like not being in denial about that and like that goes back to like talking about like what we were saying about you know like pushing things away not accepting and so I wasn't I was always trying to like show everyone that like nope everything was fine everything was great I can handle everything la 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 everything's great but because of that I was also not taking my medicine and then I got even sicker mm. And um, my pediatrician at the time, like, linked me with this child's pediatric, you know, like, she specialized in um, pediatric illness. And, um, yeah, she's been my therapist since. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I did also recently start trauma therapy, um, which has, like, been very aggressive. And um, also was going to Al-Anon. And um, I think it, you know, these are all new things. So it's, like, all very... My therapy, my child therapist has been very, very, very essential and helpful in terms of like working through what my feelings are versus what other people's feelings are. Mm. Because like I tend to get very confused as to what is what. Mm. Um, It's very easy for me to be like, oh, okay, no, I feel this way because I want that person to be happy. Or I feel this way because that's what they they think I should feel. And so my, my child therapist is really I mean that's how I, I've gotten into you know some like abusive relationships and stuff because like you just get confused right and so she's been really helpful with like me exploring what Krista feels versus what everybody else feels right and like being able to separate those things Al-Anon has been really eye-opening um, Al-Anon is a program for children or loved ones of alcoholics Mm -hmm. or addicts there's so many things I discovered about myself that I just did not know and honestly I haven't spoken I was just like listening in on these zooms and even the the few that I've done um has really been I don't even have the word for it but I I do encourage people um who've ever been like interested or have heard of it because it took me like seven years to get there you know like Mm -hmm. I first heard of it seven years ago and I found that like certain circumstances finally pushed me into the situation where like, I was like, all right, I'm going to go. And, um, you know, you take what you, you can from it. And it was, it was really, it was really helpful to hear certain things about myself and like what I can control versus like right. me trying to change someone else to understand me, to understand me, to understand me. That's, that's just going to bleed me dry. And trauma therapy 
is very, very, very new. I wish it was covered by insurance. It's also something that's very, I, I don't know how long I'll be able to do it for, but, um, she explained things to me in a very like different approach that I had never heard of. And it was like how to like almost like rewire your brain in how you respond to things because like mm -hmm. our traumatic responses will always respond in a very specific way. But the more we're aware of it, the more we can like take a hold of it, you know, acknowledge that that is what's going to happen. But like, how can I actually respond in a way that isn't stressful on my body? Mm -hmm. And so I've had like, three sessions so I can't really share like much about what I've learned but right. the concept has been um really uh, empowering in a way that it's like oh I can not just be like victim to the things that are happening to me mm. or I can't just be like, yeah. victim to my like mental health responses to certain things like it's like oh I can almost like study myself in a way that uh, I can understand and therefore make like astute choices if I can right it's been interesting. Uh, it's interesting too. Once you start becoming aware of when your body is having a trauma response, like mm -hmm. you, you can feel like once you become aware of it, you can feel the onset and then you can also combat it, which a lot of people are just like, Oh my God, you know, they don't, they can't identify what's actually happening with the, within themselves and then it becomes like a spiral or it becomes you know a massive panic attack but having those tools to be able to identify what's going on is so incredible and going back to Al-Anon I went to Al-Anon for a little bit and I have carried this quote with me my sponsor at the time would say put down the magnifying glass and pick up the mirror. And it Ooh. is one of my favorite quotes. Isn't that great? Like yeah, it's intense. every time she would be like, Brittany, put down the magnifying glass and pick up the mirror because we're sitting there going, well, why can't they just do this? And I could so easily <laughs> see if they did this and they did this, that this would get better for them. And you're, you know, every little choice they're making, you're dissecting and wondering why they're doing this to you. But instead, look in the mirror. What can you, what can you control? What can you fix about yourself? What can you focus on to make your life better? Because well, the person, your qualifier is out and about, they're not thinking about all these things that would make your life easier. They're having the time right. of their life. They're doing whatever mm -hmm. they want. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too, you know, Al-Anon or AA or, you know, all the anonymous meetings that you can go to, there's so many different ones it's such a great form of community and therapy if you need it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I am not in the program, but I am sober and I have a lot of friends who are in the program and it's so nice to be able to call them up and the way that they talk. And because, you know, people in the program, the belief is that we're here to be of service to other people. And so yeah, it's like, I, AA meetings or an Al-Anon meetings, it's like all a bunch of built-in therapists a little bit because we're all just trying to help the other person to help us. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you are having those breakdowns and everything and you're going to a friend for advice, they're getting as much out of it as you are on the receiving end. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I really... It's true. It's true. Like the power of friendship in those situations, like that one's always been a hard one for me. Like, you know, like, oh, I just like don't like to get one's time. I don't want to be burned mm -hmm. on anyone. I don't want to like drag someone down. But you're right. Like the gift is the friendship in itself and like being there for each other. Like you would do the same for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it is like, yeah, it, it's it's a gift in itself that they are able to be there for someone too. Yeah. When it comes to your health, I know I felt this way the other night because I was having a flare up and I called my girlfriend and I was crying and I was like, I just hate being the friend that's always calling somebody crying because they don't feel good. Like, and mm -hmm. I don't think people realize like when you're in pain and you have to get through a day, how exhausting it is to push through the pain, you know, you feel like a burden. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, you know, regardless of the, my friends don't make me feel this way. It's in my head of like, sure. oh God, Brittany's like calling again. I wonder what's wrong. I wonder, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's like, I've been, I don't know if I'm allergic to tomatoes or I'm getting tested for this like autoimmune disease called Bichette mm -hmm. syndrome. Like I have to go to a rheumatologist, but every single time I have anything acidic, I have ulcers all down my throat. Oh where my gosh. it is so painful and like I can't talk or I can't drink anything but water and mm -hmm. it feels like my throat is 
absolutely on fire. And I had a flare up like a couple of days ago. And then I have a torn ligament in my ankle. have no idea how it happened. My doctor wants me to get a bone density test, like all these things. And I'm like, I just, I think I feel good for like four days out of the month (laughs) where I have energy and I'm like, I can do something. That's, that's so hard. It's Mm -hmm. so hard. Yeah. With tomatoes, um, my like older sister type, she, who's also someone I look up to, she's also an actress from London Park. She does not eat tomatoes because um, of autoimmune issues. Interesting. Um, yeah, so just FYI. Wow. Apparently they're like, they are really, really bad for inflammation. Oh, good. I, yeah, I, done. I have noticed it a little bit, but um, I still eat some, to- like I eat tomato sauce sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I'm like, I've sworn them off. I've started doing celery juice every single morning again to like, yes. yeah. <laughs> Do you follow the medical medium? I love the medical medium. Yeah. He's amazing. Brian Ashburn introduced me to him. And um, my dad, when I'm home in the Bay Area, will make me celery juice in the mornings. Yeah. It really makes a difference completely. It does. Because it I does. had those ulcers in my throat and mm-hmm. I stayed on the celery juice and they've already gone down, which has been like amazing. And it's very healing. And I've, but all that to say, like, do you have that same feeling sometimes, even though your friends and your family would like, would never think of you that way? How does that weigh on you and like in your work? Uh, For me, I think the word like unlovable comes up Mm. or I know I'm lovable, but I don't ever, and this is especially in relationships, like how could anybody ever want to be with somebody who needs to sleep 12 hours a day? Like how could anybody ever want to be with someone who just wants to like lie on the couch when they're not working and like watch TV? Like how could I, like, you know, like those, those thoughts go through my head. Like that's going to make me cry (laughs) (laughs) because I, I, I feel that. I just had this conversation. I totally feel that. And I hate that anybody else feels that way, but also I'm grateful that I have somebody else who understands that. Mm-hmm. It's, rough. It's, um, it's definitely the feeling that I hope to work through. Cause um, you're right. Like logically, you know, it's not true. And if you mm-hmm. were on the other side of it and you loved somebody and they were struggling, like you'd be 100% there. Right. And so I don't know if like you had experiences where like someone made you feel otherwise. I definitely have. Um, I don't think it's necessarily anyone else's fault, um, but I don't know. It's it's definitely a choice who we surround ourselves with. Absolutely. And like, I think like if people don't necessarily understand, it's not our job to convince them to. It might. Mm-hmm. This is just me like brainstorming. It might be our jobs to realize that they they don't fit in our narrative. Right. Um, And that's completely okay. It's really hard to admit that as like a people pleaser or as somebody who like, you know, like I said, that, that thing that happened in seventh grade, like, you know, I don't want anyone to, to dislike me because I want everyone to feel like loved, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But, but it's not, it's not our jobs to love everybody. Right. It's so true. And yeah, the people who it's sad that it takes some people having something really awful happen to their health or mental health in order for them to understand and go, Oh, now I know what that person was going through instead of just being kind Mm. all the time and like Mm. compassionate or, you know, taking in when somebody Mm -hmm. says they don't feel good, it's because they don't feel good. And like Mm -hmm. you said, you know, I would have the thoughts too of like, I'm so lazy. I'm spending my whole day off doing absolutely nothing. I'm so lazy. Or Mm -hmm. your immune system is, cannot handle this and you need rest like right right you're like, healing yeah be kind to yourself and it's so interesting because like immune compromised people or chronic illness it doesn't look a certain way it, it can you don't know who has it and i remember i was in a doctor's office and there was this girl and like i was i had gained probably 65 pounds in a matter of months and I was in this doctor's office. Long story short, I was on medicine I shouldn't have been on. There was a pituitary tumor. And I'm sitting there like, I didn't look like myself anymore. And there was this girl in there with her mom who was hysterically crying. And she was skinny, skinny, skinny and beautiful. And she had the same exact thing I did. She had two pituitary tumors and she had both removed and her symptoms had only lessened, but not gone away. 
Mm-hmm. And I mean, for people listening, I'm talking about Cushing's disease. That's what every, that's what I was getting treated for and went through and Cushing's disease. Like it's, it's the most brutal invisible illness that mm-hmm. I've seen physically change somebody so much at the same time. From my experience, I know there's a, multiple men, uh, mental illness and invisible illnesses, but mm-hmm. it was like, I had this moment where I was like, if I saw this girl walking down the street, I would never think she had the same disease I did or being treated for the same thing I did. Cause I look at her like she's skinny, she's pretty, she's put together, like she's completely fine. And in that Mm -hmm. moment, I just remember that was the biggest moment for me to be like, you know what? You can never judge anybody ever again, even though we Mm -hmm. want to sometimes to make ourselves feel better or or Mm -hmm. even, you know, we don't know. We literally never know what somebody else is going through ever. Yeah. We so, never know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. Like, I think I remember, I don't know, it was maybe five years ago. I remember something came out in a magazine in which they were heavily commenting on possible, this always makes me cry, possible plastic surgery that Sarah Highline could have gotten. And they got a bunch of like plastic surgeons together to comment on this. And it was the cover of this magazine or or article. And she has kidney disease. Um, She's had like two transplants, I believe now. I'm not a personal, like this, this is all via like public news that I understand the story. But she, you know, has said she was on prednisone, which I don't know if you've experienced with I've, I've had like a very long term prednisone prednisone experience. It's, it's awful. It 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 changes so many different things. And like, yeah, mm-hmm. I can understand like when your body changes, like I've received comments about my cheeks. And so these, these plastic surgeons were commenting on her face and it's because prednisone one keeps her alive, but two, like, you know, it changes our, our face shape mm-hmm. and the pain that that already puts one through, like as an actress, as a young girl growing up, just trying to live her life, um, whether you're in the public eye or not, like it's devastating to look in the mirror and not see yourself mm-hmm. to see that there is like an illness manifesting in a way that um, is affecting who you are, like mm-hmm. physically, mentally, internally. And, um, yeah, when you, you, when you manifest it, like visually, it, it's just, it's hard to not, it, it makes it, it's hard for anyone on the outside to really understand except for mm-hmm. whoever themselves was going through. And she said, you know, it's like, she fired back and I'm, I, uh, I'm really inspired by the fact that she did and said, like, put them in their place and said, like, these are, these are for medicines. Right. And, um, back to what you were saying. Yeah. We need to all be very kind to each other. We never know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it was the same with the Selena Gomez documentary. I just watched. It was like, you know, this girl went through bipolar disorder and then Mm -hmm. her health was so bad. And then people were saying it was because she's partying too much. And it's like, (laughs) you guys really like, I, I can't imagine that my my girlfriend I was watching it with we were like imagine your worst day and like how you feel right now and having to walk out your house and having a hundred photographers and millions of people on the internet comment about it it is just and and Selena is truly one of the nicest people I've ever gotten like the pleasure to work with and I ran into her at the movie theaters and you know this was like years after Wizards and she was like, Oh my God, how are you? And like, just like the sweetest person ever and was like so kind. And to think that she was going through all of that while she was so incredibly kind, that is what like, she inspires me so much because regardless of everything she's been through, she's still been so incredibly nice and connects with people and really empathizes and puts herself in their shoes and listens. And I, you are a lot like that, which is what I'm getting to. <laughs> is that like no, that's it's, it's how fun. I've always felt about you, of how incredibly kind you have been, regardless of the the pain or sickness you've dealt with, which I just think is so admirable. So thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, same thing to you. I mean, it's it's an it's definitely an everyday challenge, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, to know that there are other people who are like going through a similar fight is always like incredibly empowering and grounding and a good reminder that we're just like we're all just human beings in it together and it's really like, lucky to be here mm-hmm. and to have met you through, through that story you know like, right to connect right the people it's brought in my life like just 
the conversations I've gotten to have with people and the, the friendships I've created through it and the people I know I can go to in those moments mm-hmm. who will understand it. It's like, it's the, it's a gift. It's an absolute gift. I mean, I, I'll cry thinking about it because I feel so grateful for you. <laughs> I just feel so grateful for you. And like I said, I just think you're amazing on your hard day. You get home. Things are a little shaky. You're like, I just need to unwind. What are you putting on TV? Mm, Recently? Oh, man. I hate to admit it, but I did get into reality TV. What show? And now, right now, I'm watching Bling Empire. Okay. I've watched a couple episodes (laughs) of that with my old roommate. And I was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. (laughs) <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, it does make me like feel like i need to like you know like step it up with my attire the big one that i was addicted to was singles inferno it is a dating show in korea i believe or it was it's a korean dating show and it was just so wholesome and sweet and i to completely circle back to the very beginning there was this one guy on there and he, he was my favorite because he could cook Mm-hmm. You're like, please yeah. come home and cook for me. <laughs> Definitely a plus. Make me some fried rice, please. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, no, recently I actually have, I don't know if it's the weather, but I have been feeling very, very tired. And mm-hmm. um, the the guy I'm currently with did did make me some stew. Or nice. he, actually, he actually made me tikka masala, which I was like, pouting or something and I was like I just want Indian food I can never get Indian food and I actually avoid um I avoid salt and um and sugar for like inflammation reasons and mm-hmm. and kidney reasons but um yeah he made it for me with no salt no sugar amazing and I felt very I felt very very supported in that moment but yeah, yeah. There, there are there are times where I'm like still sleeping in and I feel like I'm holding someone back mm. Okay. But yeah, did I even answer the question? I mean, right now I'm watching Atlanta. I love Atlanta. I just finished Partner Track. It was great. Yeah. Clueless will always be one I go to. <laughs> but I was thinking like I, during the pandemic, the show that made me like guaranteed laughed, ha- be in a better mood was Jackass. And when I was seeing all your promo with Johnny Knoxville, I was like, I am so jealous because I love him so much. Is he incredible? <laughs> really nice yeah he has made such a big effort to reach out everyone um has been just grateful kind smart fun um but johnny knoxville i had never seen a jackass and i watched my very first one while i had COVID. actually um i watched the fourth one and oh my gosh (laughs) it's really creative it's insane it's not just like silly it's like they are like how do they even think of those things and you can tell like how specific they get and how particular they are. Yeah. It's pretty cool. You have to watch Jackass 3D. I think that's probably my favorite one. Like oh I laughed gosh. so I hard. That 3D. Oh. Just to literally sneak. We had like the toy room growing up with like the TV and the PlayStation and everything. And I would sneak mm-hmm. out like when it was, you know, time for bed, I would sneak in that room and I would go turn on Jackass. And I just... I die and I got my mom into it over the pandemic. Oh, so gosh. it's just, it was yeah. so funny because like I'm sitting there with my mom and she's watching this and obviously so much of it is so inappropriate. And she'll be like, really, Brittany? Really? But then all of a sudden she's like crying, laughing. And it's so good. They are, they are wild. They, I admit it was like beyond my even like imagination. Um, but yeah, in general, he, he did his own stunt on Reboot. He's a very, very kind person. Mm. Um, Rachel too. Um, I watched a lot of crazy. Act- I do this thing where like, if I'm going to work with someone, I watch a lot of their stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watch a lot of crazy acts. And then Key and Peel. I used to work when I first moved out here, I was like yeah. a regular background worker on Key and Peel and they were both just like, the <laughs> nicest. Yeah. They were so nice. Yeah, I had Keegan's such so a nice. crush on Keegan. Ugh. I'm sure everyone does. I yeah. like don't even um I don't interact with him that much, but he is just so he does everything and he's always like taking care of like everyone and just um, making sure, you know, like there's always laughs and mm-hmm. like like you said, like actively listening. Like I, I'm always so weird in front of him. I don't know why. I'm always like, I think it's because I think he's so amazing. Like I get right. it. I, I don't even know if that the word starstruck is a like maybe it's starstruck, but I didn't realize that's what it's called. But I I am not articulate. I don't know if you remember the reboot scene where I go up to him and Judy and I'm talk about, yes. I, I try to make a joke and it go on and on and on. And it's not funny. Um, 
I think I've like had a real life experience like that with, and it was with Judy and Keegan and me. It was just three of us. And as it was happening in real time, I, I, all I could hear in my head was like, this is exactly like that reboot scene in episode two. And just say something funny. Cause this is me funny. Like, yeah. and it just got worse and worse. And they just looked at me and I was like, Oh my gosh, I just relived exactly what just happened in the, in the episode. But, You're like, guys, I'm method. What are you talking about? <laughs> I should have said that. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're all like just so, so kind and yeah again, like hard working people who've worked forever they they really earned what they do and it's so amazing to see that like reflected mm-hmm, mm-hmm. did you because you watched a lot of crazy ex-girlfriend did you have that moment when you were with her in person like holy shit like this person's in front of me now and I'm so invested in her character in a different realm yeah it's like that thing where it's like do you talk about it do you not do you talk about it? do you not right. but she talks about the show a lot and she had just come out with her book which I, I really recommend. It's um, I think she talks actually a lot about her mental health too in that book. Um, it's called um, I Want to Be Where the Normal People Are. I I felt very seen by reading the book. Mm. I really recommend it. Yeah, it was it was really it was very raw, but beautifully done. Yeah, but yeah, it's hard to not want to like. I mean, I secretly hope if we do get a season two, there will be a musical episode. Oh, because you know, Egan's like, and Schmigadoon, like they all mm-hmm. sing and dance, and I grew up like obsessed with musical theater so that would be my dream oh my god that would be so fun i love i love reboot because it it's literally like the best parts of every sitcom and then like also is like inside baseball and it's just so good it's so good i love that i'm so glad you like it it's it's it was a lot of fun and i'm I'm hoping to hear to hear good news (laughs) Yeah, well, I think you will. I have a good feeling you will. It's interesting because I watched Modern Family during the pandemic. I had never seen it before. But again, I turned oh, on okay. I turned on E and they were playing it. And I was like, I'm getting really invested into this. So I started it from the beginning. And it was like, I could not wait to get home, make my lunch, mm-hmm. sit down and watch Modern Family. Like I was yeah. so excited. And so it being from the same co-creator, I'm like obsessed. And it's like if Modern Family could, you know, curse and be raunchy, which is like even better. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steve Levitan has a vision. He mm-hmm. really does. He also works very specifically and uh, very openly. And so it's, it's really, it makes sense why Modern Family did so well. I also was a huge Modern Family fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is one that you're right, is always on TV. And if it is, I, I keep it on that. Mm-hmm. I would marry Phil Dunphy tomorrow. Absolutely. Oh my God. I love those. Me, uh, there are so many scenes between Claire and Phil that. Goals. <laughs> just so good yeah literal <laughs> goals so he really does like tap so well into like the man like the husband who or the significant other who wants to do the best and does do the best in his own way but like just misses the mark on so many things in the most endearing way yes yes <laughs> that we can all relate to it's just like ah! like yeah. why like just, why do you listen to so-and-so tell you to watch this when I've told you to watch that like a million times. Yeah. Like, yep. I think it was like an episode. I don't know if you've seen the episode yet, but I, I actually talk about this episode often where like Claire has always apparently recommended the iceberg salad to Phil. Yes. I love <laughs> that episode. And he comes home one day and he's like, Oh, like he, I should lunch with my boss. He recommended the salad. I never, I never thought about getting this. And it's so good. And she was mad at him like the whole episode. And he's like trying to figure it out. And I'll be like, look, honey, I fixed the stairs. Yeah. Look, honey, I very like the book, like scrolling through all the dates. Yeah. And then like she finally gets over it. And at the end, they go out to dinner and he's like, oh my gosh, did I tell you there's an iceberg salad? And then it all starts over again. Yes. It's so good. It's done so well. It's done so well. Steve is great. Everyone's great. Like people the people who worked on Modern Family, you can just tell, like, came together in a way that everything just clicked. Yeah. And again, it goes back to the whole episode's about an iceberg salad. And it's so good. Like, you know, exactly. these these episodes where they're not these, like, in, insane moments of, like, a story being moved forward every single time. It's like, it's an episode about a salad that is so funny and, like, gives you that, permission and that moment to shut your brain off and just laugh 
like yeah. and just I think we've all been there too mm-hmm. like in real life like that is like real life absolutely. we get upset over the silliest things absolutely that we talk about at the end of the day yeah well before we go i want to ask you what is the most useful piece of advice you've gotten and what helps you maintain your mental health oh recently i think a good one is like something happens in a way that you feel hurt or you've been hurt you've been like burned or whatever it's not necessarily a reflection on you that's a reflection on them you are still like a very whole person and a whole being um outside of other people's actions Mm -hmm. i think multiple people have actually said that to me that it it um it has nothing to do with what you've done right and what's what's the best piece of advice you would give to somebody who's struggling mentally or you know um with health or an Mm -hmm. inspiring actor like what is the one thing that you uh, have always lived by and told other people i mean i don't i don't know if it sounds cheesy but i think it's that (laughs) yeah, <laughs> it does sound cheesy, but it really is. Like, I think that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there, there is a reason why you are experiencing exactly what you're experiencing or what you, the choices that you have made, because like the person you are tomorrow wouldn't be who you were without all those things that had just happened. Absolutely. Like I do, everything happens for a reason in a way that informs like the person that you can choose to be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love that. That's so true. What's meant for you is meant for you and Mm -hmm. meant to help you at the same time. And it's definitely hard to like think that way when those moments are happening, but it's Mm -hmm. so true. And I look back at everything I've been through with immense gratitude Mm -hmm. in the moment. Obviously I wasn't grateful for it, but now I look back and I'm like, I'm so happy I went through that because one, I'll never go through it again. And two, if I do, I will, I will know what to do. Right. And to be a uh, yeah. of somebody else if they have it. Yeah. So we all like, you know, like share our own wisdom and share our experience and share our stories. And then at the end of the day, everyone's paths are their own. Mm-hmm. Well, this was an incredible conversation. I oh, thank, you for me. thank you for doing it. You, you speak with so much um, like understanding. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's also because I just like love when you and I get to actually sit down and talk. <laughs> Like it's so nice. I'm like, I have to see you soon. Yes, for you soon. I'm I'm my dad's getting a surgery and I'm headed up to the mm. the bay for a bit, but I'm really glad this was able to happen. Thanks yes. for being so on top of it. I have not been on top of it. So like oh thank gosh, you for all it's fine. It's totally fine. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for being an incredible friend. I am so proud of you. Everybody should go stream reboot. It's on Hulu. All eight episodes are on there, right? Yeah, all eight of them are out. The- First one is on YouTube and Facebook for free. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. Six- amazing. Yeah. It's so good. And it's just, you shine. You are so Thank good you. in it. Thank you, Brett. Thank you oh, so much. Yes, of course. Okay. I love you. Um, love you love keep you me too. posted. Thank you again. And no, thank you for having me. And we'll have right, an amazing rest of your day and have get some rest. Thanksgiving. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.